Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to talk about a new spark plug option for your N54 powered BMW. These are NGK laser iridiums, part number 97506. They are two stages colder than stock. Before this, there was a 95770, which I have a video on my channel about. Those were one step colder than stock, but since I have upgraded turbos, they're not holding up anymore. And this is the new option. If you have stage two turbos or a really aggressive tune. And just so you know, the 95770s replace the 5992s, which are a really highly rated plug. Stock on this car is Bosch. So I'm sure a lot of you guys know that with the M54, you do have to change out to NGK plugs if you want to run high boost and whatnot. In my opinion, this is going to be the appropriate option if you have upgraded turbos. So I picked up a couple parts to do this properly. In my previous video where I talked about misfires and talked about why you should upgrade to the 95770s, I'll put a link in the description. I just had a basic gap tool. I got feeler gauges and a proper tool to actually set the gap without damaging them potentially. So let's see what these are gapped to from the factory. And just as an FYI, there's a couple improvements with this from what I've seen. This little metal piece here, this jacket comes more toward the tip. There's a copper washer here. So when you're torquing things down, you get a better feel and a better seal. As an FYI, these will fit the S55 and the N20 as a colder plug. But on the N54, the two stages colder. These should be gapped to point 0.028 right here. This should be a perfect fit. You can make that out. It's nearly a perfect fit. We want to bring that gap down to point 0.019. So with this tool, you can actually rock, rock it down to tighten the gap without banging it on anything. This is what I want right here, 0.19. And the reason you need to tighten the gap is when you hot run high boost, you're more likely to blow the spark out. That's what's happening. I actually have mine gapped to 0.022. Uh, the NGK 95770 is the one stage holder. And I really could have pulled them out and maybe tighten the gap and see if I could avoid a misfire. But there's no point really. Uh, these are gonna be a better option anyway. And those are near the end of their life as well as they're not as likely to hold up compared to these. For the last year or two, people have been swearing by these. So I went a little too much there. It's an easy fix. Just gap it out. So that's perfect right there. I got a bit of a drag. No movement otherwise, but just the slightest drag. So I'm going to do that for the rest and I'll come back when I'm ready to install them on the car. And just as an FYI, the trade off when you do this is you may have uh, not as nice cold starts and whatnot. It should be fine when it's warmed up because there's less spark gap here. So when the car's cold, there's less likelihood that the fuel would ignite. I'm in a pretty warm climate. It shouldn't be a big issue. Some people go as low as 0 0.018. And I believe it's recommended unless you're crazy high horsepower, you go to 0 0.020. I'm splitting the difference of 0.19. It should work for my climate. So there's an example of how to do it where you're not banging down on this and if you get it wrong, you're not using the spark plug tool to wedge it back out and damaging the electrode, you're not touching the electrode. So this would be a good investment for you guys. It's not gonna cost you more than about six bucks. You'll get it out of your local auto parts store. So those are all gapped nicely. Let's turn our attention to the car now and get the stock plugs removed. Your engine cover has three five mil Allens. Get a lift up on your coils, plugs. I like to take the extension that I'm using, stick it underneath, and pull it out. Get 
you'll need a spark plug tool. And FYI, I have the cowl delete, which is saving me a ton of time. I'd recommend it for you guys that are tuned. So this is a 12 point thin wall socket that I'm using to remove the spark plugs. At the rear, I'm using a little, a little bit of a longer extension here. A bit of a shorter extension for the spark plug number five underneath this bar. I wouldn't recommend what I just did if you're planning on keeping your plugs using a magnet now to pull them all out. So let's quickly compare. I don't see any obvious issues with the way things are being burnt. No oil burning or anything like that. And right now I'm on my version one of my tune. And for anybody that's wondering what's going on with the turbo update, I've been knocking out some issues, vacuum, uh, I've been fixing boost leaks, uh, finding little issues like this where my spark plugs aren't able to keep up and everything as I'm data logging. We're getting to the home stretch. I have buttoned down all my boost leaks. I'm gonna put these new plugs in and I should be able to do a good, nice pull. I put that fuel pump upgrade so I'm no longer running out of fuel. I got nice solid pressure. Should be ready for version two soon, hopefully. All right, so this has a collapsible crush washer. This has a copper washer. If you look at this part right here, it seems to be a little longer and the insulator is a little more robust. This is meant for the S55 and the N20, I believe they're under more pressure from the factory. Silicon grease, dielectric. So the boot seals and doesn't stick. I had some people comment on my previous video or I just shoved it in the end of the coil and the people don't like that because it could interfere with this connection point here. So I'm following their advice. All right, back to the car to get these installed. I'm sure you guys already know this, but you'd always want to hand tighten. have a nice feeling when you bottom them all the way out because of the copper washer it's just a secure final flattening using a torque wrench we're going to torque these to 17 foot pounds I really like the copper washers on these plugs. Uh, very easy to torque. So for the people that are asking how are the turbos performing, you'll know right off the bat if you want to achieve the type of power I'm going for, approximately at least 550 horsepower or more, maybe 600. Plugs have to be done. Make sure your coils are healthy. You don't have to be upgraded necessarily, but they should be healthy. Gap them to 0.019 and you got to do your fuel pump upgrade the hpfp upgrade which is which i have in another video so i'm going to get these put back on and then we'll come back when the car is ready for a start i'll get the keys and give it a quick start see how it sounds As you can see, it runs perfectly smooth. No perceptible difference in terms of idle quality on a warm restart because the engine is still holding some heat. So it seems to be a good solution. Um, if you guys want to run E40, E50+, plus, Stage 2+, plus, or a custom tune with your stock turbos, you probably want to consider this as well. So there you have it, a new option for the N54. Not necessarily that new, but 
I don't think too many people have heard about the option of adding stage two colder spark plugs on this platform. Uh, it's basically a must if you're gonna run more than 600 wheel, I believe, and which is a lot, but at the same time, can be an issue when you're running stage two plus turbos, whether it be pure or whatever brand. So just wanted to get some content out there for you guys. Again, while I'm waiting for my tuner, you know, not super thrilled about that, but hopefully soon. Anyway, regardless, even if they're sending me updated tunes, I'd be running into issues such as these spark plugs not handling the high pressure, my fuel pump not having the flow, etc. Uh, random boost leaks, like at my intercooler pipe there, I had an issue where I had to extend it out a bit because it was expanding with pressure and getting too short and popping off. So, all in all, um, we're getting to the home stretch, hopefully. I should be ready to do consistent data logs with this current tune without any issues. Next up is going to be state version two and then version three, we hit the dyno and the track. But for all you guys that keep commenting about how the turbos are performing, if you caught this video, they're awesome. No wastegate rattles, very responsive, sound awesome, feel awesome. No complaints of the turbos. They're holding up beautifully. Whether or not you guys are holding off to see what type of numbers I put down, I'm not going for records here because I have a high mileage auto, but if I can put down, I'll probably aim for 26 PSI to be realistic, maybe 28. And if I can put down 550 wheel, I'll be happy. If it's close to 600, even better. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you found this video useful or entertaining. Uh, if this is your first video you're catching of mine, consider subscribing. I upload regularly. <laughs>